a fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When the weather's bad, do you and your friends ever hang around the house wondering what to do? I'll bet it happens lots. Well, you know where you can have the most fun? In the kitchen, with a package of the new Betty Crocker brownie mix. That's right. It's easy as can be to bake up a big batch of luscious chocolatey brownies with Betty Crocker brownie mix. Everything you need is right in the package. Just add one egg if you like the chewy, fudgy kind of brownies. And two eggs if you want them soft and tender like cake. Add nuts, too, if you like. Either way, Betty Crocker brownies are the G.I. can't eat them fast enough kind. Even if you've never baked before, you'll turn out scrumptious, chocolatey, perfect brownies the very first time. And what fun you and your gang will have eating brownies that you baked yourselves. Have Mom get Betty Crocker brownie mix next time she shops. Then invite your friends over for some fun. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! Nick Lurgan, owner of the Retton Cafe, was secretly the leader of a gang of gunslingers who for some time had terrorized the territory. One evening, Nick sat in his office smiling and waiting for the excitement he knew would soon grip the town. Then he heard what he had been waiting for. Nick quickly rose from his chair and went into the cafe. What's going on out there? Outlaws broke into the bank. Yeah, Sheriff, come on. Later, four men met with Nick in his office. They had come in the back way one at a time. Nick sat at his desk silently until the last one arrived. Then he spoke. Well, you got the cash he went after, but Tex got wounded in the arm and caught. He's over in the jail right now. Yeah. That's bad, boss. I suppose they get him to talk. Yeah. Tex is a type that would to save his own neck. That's right. The sheriff took a posse out to try to trail you fellas, so he hasn't had a chance to question Tex yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can bust Tex out of the jail, boss. Oh, there's not much chance of that. But as soon as the sheriff gets back, I'll go over and offer a suggestion he might follow. If he does, we won't have to worry anymore about Tex. Now leave by the back way and go into the cafe one at a time. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. It was late that night when Nick Lurgan went to see the sheriff who had returned with the posse. Howdy, Nick. I suppose you want to know if we got a line on that gang, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that gang has me worried, Sheriff. I I thought I'd come talk to you about it. Really sit down and be comfortable. Yeah, thank you. Well, frankly, we didn't get far. Seems like they separated after they left town and covered their trails too well. What's more, the moon wasn't too bright for trailing. Hmm. Too bad. I reckon you heard we caught one of them, though. We hit his arm with a bullet just as he was mounting. His horse bolted, so we cut him. He's back in the cell now. Yeah. Yeah, I did hear about that. Did, uh, did you get him to tell you anything? Yeah, no. Seems like he's scared to talk, but maybe he'll get over it. Hmm. 
I was wondering, Sheriff, maybe you ought to try something drastic. Drastic? Like what, for instance? Well, uh, like making it easy for the prisoner to escape. He'd head for the gang's hideout and the posse could follow him. Yeah, yeah I see what you mean. But if he figured his escape was free... Well, uh, uh, it'd have to be done in a way that he wouldn't suspect. There, uh, there are always a couple of horses at the hitch rack behind the jail. Yeah, that's right. Well, now, if you tipped off the jailer to take his breakfast in at dawn and slip and fall as he entered the cell, I think the outlaw would take advantage of it. I reckon he would have dead. Well, you have to take chances, Sheriff. You'll never get that outlaw to talk, I feel sure of it. Well, all right, Nick. <laughs> I'll tip off the jailer what he's to do. Then I'll have the posse trail the prisoner when he leaves. Nick returned to his office where two of his men, Walt and Chet, were waiting. Well, boys, it's all fixed. The sheriff fell for my idea. You mean he's going to let Tex get away? Yep. I hope Tex has sense enough not to come directly here. He'll know he has to grab a horse and get out of town fast. Before he gets a chance to circle around and come back here, he'll be dead. What? Dead? Holy smoke. What do you mean, dead? Now, Walt, I want you and Chet to go out to the Cottonwood Grove alongside the trail west of town. I'll be there at dawn. What for? <laughs> you ought to be able to guess that. When Tex rides out that way, which is the logical trail for him to follow, see that he gets a bullet. A secluded clearing beyond the grove of cottonwoods out along the west trail. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion Toto had camped for the night. It was just after dawn, and the masked man was preparing to unroll from his blanket when he heard a distant shot. Toto, did you hear that shot? Uh, it comes from down trail. We'll saddle the horses and go investigate. Uh. Hurriedly, the Lone Ranger and Toto saddled Silver and Scout. Then they mounted and rode from the clearing. A few minutes later, they approached a figure lying alongside the trail. There's a on the trail. He must have been ambushed. Who's the Who's the Yeah, he's still alive. Give me your canteen, Toto. <laughs> Here, Canty. Good. Easy, fella. Easy. Here's some water. No. No use. I'm done for. Shot in the back. They framed me. I know now. Tell the sheriff there. There. He's gone, Toto. Ah. Him speak of being framed. Him say that... Kimasabi. Yes? You see big dust cloud on trail from town. Ooh. We better not be found here with this dead man. Come on, Silver! Come The sheriff and the posse had started out a few minutes after Tex left to trail him from town. As they approached the grove of cottonwoods, a deputy pointed ahead and spoke. Hey, look, Sheriff. Two hombres riding over the rise ahead. Seems like one's a redskin, the other's masked. I noticed it when he looked back. He went over that rise like they were in a big hurry, too. Must have seen his coming. Yeah. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him. Spurring their horses to a faster pace, the sheriff and the posse soon reached the spot where Tex lay. Oh, 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 oh. Gee, it's the outlaw who escaped from jail. The man we were trailing. He shot in the back. Huh? Yep, as dead as a door there. Hey, Sheriff, the two we saw going over the rise a couple of minutes ago, that Indian and masked man, they must have done it. Yeah. They must be members of the outlaw gang this hombre belonged to. They must have knew we were training them. Yeah, that's right. A couple of you men stay here and bury this hombre. Ted and I'll stay. Right. 
The rest of us will try to pick up the trail of the masked man and the Indian. He'd let him in. Right, Let's yeah. get going. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up. When the Lone Ranger and Toffle rode away to avoid the posse, they knew they must have been seen. They covered their trail by riding along in streams and on rocky surfaces until they were finally convinced that they couldn't be followed. They had circled the town and finally came to a halt in a grove. Who's in the grove? What's going on? Well, Andy said he's going to I've been thinking, Toto, about what that dying man said, that he'd been framed. Ah. The posse couldn't have had more than a flashing look at us, Toto, as we went over the hill. Isn't that right. I'm sure you'd be able to go to town without being recognized. You you might find out something. Uh, uh, go. All right, I'll wait here for you. Uh, me get news, then come back. Get him out. Oh. It was almost noon before Toto returned to the place where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Oh, scout, oh, color. Easy, scout. Easy, color. What did you learn, Toto? Uh, me go to cafe. Me hear men say outlaw escaped jail at dawn. Him have wound in right arm. Then the man we found dying on the trail was an outlaw? Ah. He might be a member of the gang we came down this way to find. And that's what me think. Gang robbed bank at Redton last night. Fellow get wounded and captured. Then him get away this morning. Strange he was able to get away. Ah. Sheriff and posse come back to town just for me leave. Then tell about finding dead outlaw on trail. Did they see us leaving as we thought they had? Ah. Deputy come in the cafe. Him say posse see masked man, Indian, go over rise. Him say sheriff think we an outlaw gang. I see. Sheriff get bigger posse, and soon them start out again to find us. That certainly interferes with our plans. We came here to help catch the outlaw gang. Now our posse is hunting us for murder. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one that the happy people have to face. Wheaties, our Wheaties, and the doo-doo-doo, and okay. Okay. You bet we're eating our Wheaties out west, including the champs. Take Eddie Matthews, born in Texarkana, Texas, and a great slugger for the Milwaukee Braves. He got a Texas start and a Wheaties start. Been eating them for years. And there's Gene Littler from California, one of the best pro golfers in the game. Listen. How he socks them off the tee. You bet Gene's a Wheaties champ. Been eating them since he was seven. A He-Man breakfast for champs and gonna be champs. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties. And you do, 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 and okay. Okay. to continue. After hearing the news, the masked man thought for a few moments. Then he spoke. Toto, the person or persons who killed that escaped outlaw must have been members of his own gang. Ah. If we could pick up their trail, it might lead us to their hideout. It's up to us to locate them before the posse catches up with us. And then we go back where we find fellow who gets shot? Yes. We'll circle out from there and try to pick up the trail of his killer. All right, let's get going. Easy, steady, big Easy, Easy, Easy father. Come on, sit down. Toto found the trail left by Walt and Chet. Oh, scout. Oh, father. Kim Asabi. Oh, easy, steady, big fella. Find something, Toto. Ah, they're hoof marks. Two horses. Then go through grove that way, away from trail. This gives us something to work on. Let's get going and see where the trail leads. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Walt and Chet had covered their trail well, and it took the masked man and Indian quite some time to follow it. Finally, it became a clear trail that led to the main street of town. The Lone Ranger and Toto stopped on the edge of town in a secluded place. Oh, Silver. Oh, Easy. Oh, 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 Easy now. Roof marks we were following go into town. We found that out. They've been covered over by many others in the dusty street. Ah. They were members of his gang who shot that outlaw. 
Might mean the gang is hiding right in town. That's right. Maybe them help outlaw get out of jail, then shoot him. You say he's been framed. I'd like to know just how they helped him escape. I may not hear anyone say. If I could talk to the sheriff, I... Well, him out with posse, hunting for us, Kimasabi. Yes, I know. But he'll be back by nightfall. We'll wait until then. After darkness had fallen, the sheriff and his deputy were in the sheriff's office discussing the events of the day. Hey, never Hank. This whole thing has been messed up. That's too bad you listened to Nick Lurgan about fixing to let that prisoner escape. Yeah, I know, I know. You don't have to rub it in. Nick keeps talking of how worried he is about that gang being on the loose. But I notice he never rides with a posse. He sure would have wasted time today if he'd gone with us. I reckon that masked man and Redskin are a good many miles away from here by now. You're wrong, Mr. Hey, the masked man. He sneaked in the door behind us. Hey, you can't come in here holding guns like that. <laughs> I am in and holding guns, Sheriff. But I'm holding them only as a precaution. I want to talk to you. Where's that Indian friend of yours? <laughs> He's at the window behind your deputy. Huh? Hey? Also holding a gun as a precaution. Jumping catfish, he got his hold top. It won't hurt you to talk a few minutes. We're neither killers nor outlaws. We came here as friends. Yes. Who ever heard of a mask, hombre, being a friend of the law? I have. And if you think a moment, perhaps you have too. Yeah, you're loco. Why, I've never... Well, come to think of it, I have heard of one mask, hombre, like that. Gee. You couldn't be the lone ranger. Yes. How did I heard the shot and investigated? I... I don't need these guns now. I'm sure glad you put them away, too. <laughs> uh, tell me, Sheriff, just how did that wounded outlaw escape this morning? Well, frankly, the whole thing was a frame-up. You uh, said a frame-up? Uh-huh. That's what he said. Who? The outlaw, just before he died. He was still alive when Tom and I reached him. He said they framed him. Then he said to tell the sheriff, there, there. That's as far as he got. Uh-huh. I figured he was about to say where the gang was or who were in the gang. But that doesn't make sense. How could they frame him out of jail? I, I did it hoping to follow him. You it. did it because Nick Lurgan told you to. Yep, that's right. Uh, who's Nick Lurgan? The cafe owner. Huh? Hello, come around the door and come inside. Ah. I have a plan that may prove whether Lurgan's the leader or not. Yeah. Sheriff, if you and your deputy are willing... Here's what I think, yes. Later that night, the deputy sheriff entered the cafe and made certain to join a group with which some of Lurgan's men were standing. Well, evening, boss. I sure got news for you tonight. Yeah? Not a prisoner escape, Hank? No, no, no. But we do have two more in the pokey. Believe it or not, the sheriff and I happened to surprise that masked man in red skin on the edge of town. Do they admit killing the prisoner? Are they members of the outlaw gang? Well, from what they say, they aren't with the gang exactly. It seems the head of the gang hired them to go out there to that grove and kill off the two hombres he was sending to shoot the escaped prisoner. What? Say, hey, why should the outlaw leader go to all that trouble? Well, we figured out to make sense. Now, look, he had to have an excuse to get his two men out to that grove. So he appointed them to plug the escaped prisoners. By hiring a masked man, an Indian chief, he was getting rid of three hombres who'd be cut in on the bank cash they got last night. That sure slick planning. Yeah, but it didn't work. Yeah, too bad the two hombres we caught can't identify the outlaw leader. Seems he got in touch with them through a friend, and he met him at night outside of town. Well, boys, uh, got to get back. The sheriff's waiting. Let's get Jim and West to go in with us for the showdown. Come on. A short time later, Nick looked up at the four hard-faced men who stood before his desk. Well, what do you fellas want? I told you I'd call you when I wanted you. Nick, we found out all about your plans. Those two gunslingers you hired to do us in have been caught. Yeah. What are you talking about? You know what we mean. You're no good chiseling cook. Why, well, right, for two cents, I'd blow the top off that empty skull of yours. No cheap mutt like you's going to come in here calling me, Nick. We can all play at the shooting game, well, Nick. Uh, That's right. We're four against one. Now, get that bank door and get it out quick, Savvy. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Calm down, boys. There's no use blowing off your hat over nothing. If you want to split made right now, all right, we'll give you the cash. Five ways even, all around. How's that? Open the safe behind you and get it out. Sure, sure. Hey, 
There it is. Just as it came from the bank. Grab that sack, Chet. Sure. Hey, what's the idea? We're counting you out, fancy pants. You tried to double-cross us after we all played along with you on job after job. You had Tex framed out of jail, then you sent us to plug him. Well, you agreed to do it. Yeah, but we didn't know you planned to have us filled with lead at the same time. I reckon Jim and Wes would have been next. Ah, uh, you're all loco. But loco or not, you're not leaving with that cash. I talked the sheriff into letting Tex escape to save your hides as well as my own. Now put that sack down. Now, Nick, if you want to show down with bullets, you'll get it right now. Let's all get in on that. Hey, what? Uh, hey, the sheriff. How do get in? I'll get in. Oh, my leg. Use your guns. Get out through the cafe. Oh. Come on, we're waiting out here for you. We're trapped. Let them have it. Hold it. I'm here. Then we do not leave. Go oh. Good work, fellow. Well, if the other two want to start something. We know when we're late. Yeah, you're too many for us. All right. Some of you men get these killers to jail. Give me that. Quit shooting through the window, bad man. You heard enough, Sheriff. And that bank sack is real evidence. Yep. These coyotes will squeal on one another, and we have plenty to hang them for. Now I reckon Nick knows what it is to be double-crossed. That masked hombre helped the law against us. Yeah, you fool. I never saw that masked man in my life. I don't even know who he is. (laughs) <laughs> well, Tuttle and I won't stay to get acquainted with him, Sheriff. He and his gang are the type of men the West is able to do without. Yes, that's right. Hey, boys, under your plan worked fine, mister. I'm mighty glad you dropped in at the office. We move on now, Sheriff. Tuttle and I have other work to do. Adios. Good night and good luck to you. Hey, I don't savvy all this. How come that mask on? Shut up. Who are you to ask questions, Lurgan? You'll have time in jail to wonder about what happened. But I'll tell you this much. You and your kind are duck soup for an hombre like the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.